I was halfway across the USA in Georgia at the Peaches to Beaches annual yard sale, and some of my friends told me there was a U-Haul filled with sports cards, so I had to go check it out. We're in a trailer right now, looking at all this stuff. Got a little pile of stuff. Ricky Henderson. all these boxes and stuff. A lot of Georgia guys. Man, I was running behind trying to treasure hunt. Too much. I know, I can see, man. It's like crazy. Where are you at on the Rickies and, and these? Just kind of give me an idea of what, what you're thinking on this kind of stuff. Then go from there. Yeah, the more you get, the better. The of deal course, too. yeah, I understand. Um, about, about 60 bucks. 60? Okay. That's I'll do deal. 60 on, on those, yeah. this little pile. Yeah, I'll yeah. do 60 and yeah, then let me look some more. Just keep digging. And okay. I'll, I'll hook you up. When you're at a yard sale or picking through a U-Haul filled with sports cards, this is something I like to do. I like to pick out a couple things that I know I want and get an idea of what the prices are going to be. I had a Ricky Henderson rookie in there along with a second year card. The Ricky had a little bit of damage on it. I didn't realize at the time. And then there was a Robin Yunt uh, rookie and a second year card. There was a Marissa Miller that I ended up selling here just the other day for 30 bucks. So when I heard 60 for all that, there was a couple other autos in there as well. Um, I knew it was worth digging a little bit more in this trailer. Sounds good to me, man. Literally a big collecting like so wonderful, dude. Just need to, need to move on? Need to move stuff, you know. I hear you, man. It's sickness. I know, I'm in it too, man. <laughs> Decided to pick up that Aaron Murray rookie auto, number to 50. Figured some Georgia fan out there would want it. Have you seen any boxes of cards, Don? Would you grab them? What'd you say? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. How much is. Like this guy. As you can see, I am looking at all the sports cards, but my girlfriend Dawn is looking at just the general stuff we love to flip, and my buddy Dave is also just looking for stuff to flip. I'm the only one who really likes the sports cards, though. Um, and then the half five. That's the same one that Walter wore in the movie. Oh, yeah? I'll have to ask him. How much is it? That's 20. If you make a pile, you get a better deal. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I'll definitely be buying a lot of cards. Yeah. Yeah. Just is, it, is you with him? Yeah. yeah we're all together. Right over here oh, okay. Side. Thank you. Yeah. I just got a good offer stuff. Got lots of cool stuff. Pardon the angle of my GoPro a little here. I should have had it tilted a little bit more down so you could see the cards better. There's a Drew Brees, a press pass rookie. Uh, usually, I like it to focus a little more on the card, so I apologize for that. You like the Def Leppard piece? You like the Def Leppard one? Yeah. Oh, crap. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, dude. Classic carry. Always knocking stuff over. <laughs> Okay. 
You may notice that I am kind of rushed going through these cards. It's because this is a big community yard sale. Not really a community. It's like, I think, 100 miles or more in Georgia, peaches to beaches. And there are a lot of pickers like me going to these places looking for stuff to buy. So I have to make decisions quick. I have to determine what I want to buy. It's kind of exhilarating. It's kind of hard. And it's something that uh, I'm trying my best uh, to make the best possible deal and not miss out on anything good. This is what appears to be a complete set of 1977 Topps football. Off the top of my head, I had no idea what a 1977 Topps football set went for. Wasn't even sure like who the big rookies were. Upon a little bit of research, I realized Steve Largent is the big rookie from this year. Also, it's a second year Walter Payton. Pretty cool set. I couldn't find much while I was looking up. Now, I'm a kind of person, if I'm at a yard sale, a flea market, I will look stuff up in front of people. This gentleman's a reseller. He understands that it was no big deal. I encourage you guys to do the same. It's not that big of an issue. I couldn't find much there. I saw like 250, 300, maybe 400 on the high end. Upon getting home, doing a little more research, I saw like all the way down to, from 150 all the way up to like three, maybe $400. So it's all over the place. I also didn't count every card. A couple cards were creased that I ended up buying super cheap on eBay to replace. So I decided to put this in my pile, assuming it was complete or almost complete. I wanted to check to make sure it had the key cards because that's the stuff that would cost a lot to replace. The Steve Largent rookie was in there. The Walter Payton was in there. So I decided to put it in my pile. That little pile, yeah, is the one I'm looking at. One of them had fallen, so I don't know if the Aaron Murray was yours. Oh, uh, yeah, it should be. I think I, the, I picked out one. decided to get this box but i didn't check for the card i should have checked for the bo jackson it wasn't there that could be replaced for like 10 or 15 dollars so that's maybe a 30 40 dollar set still pretty cool 1988 um i was excited to get it Hey Dave, will you put this in my little pile right over there with the Carrie, sure, what we should do is we should just go to his house tomorrow when it's a ranch. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> well, seriously. <laughs> we should. I just mind if I grab this one now. No worries. Dude, I used to love this guy. Hojo. The Marquise Grissom. The 90s Dream Box. Tartable. Uh, I want to get all those, but that's not smart because he's not going to be cheap on them. Pendleton, rookie. Kent Herbeck, rookie. 
Andy Van Slyke, rookie. I just put them in the spots and let them know I put them in there. Don't be careful with just a few of the things though if you on um you know if they get in the vault way and stuff like that if there's any kind of comic books because sometimes it spills over in there. Okay, no, we get it, we get it. We'll... Especially if it's something that's like got a little value to it or something. We'll do, thank you, man. Yeah, man. These aren't really worth too much, but they're fun. Sometimes I buy stuff just because I dig it. I don't care that I'm going to make a ton of money on each individual card. I just want to sell stuff that I dig. Dykstra rookie. There we go. Provision. Grab. Danny Tartable. I like to party. Technically a Griffey rookie. Technically barely, barely, barely a Griffey rookie. If I have a soft spot for anything in sports cards, it's like late 90s basketball, a little bit of football, and basically any baseball stars between like 1991 and 1994 or 5. I just love getting rookies of like Danny Tartable, Ruben Sierra, stuff like that, Julio Franco, guys that I just thought were cool. So I'm oftentimes going to buy those and, and flip them to somebody else, I guess, who feels the same as me. And if I don't flip them, it's okay because those cards are cool. Brave. Brave team set. Lots of fun stuff right now. Yeah. Are you done? Uh, are you? Yeah. Um, there's a little more I want to look at, but not much. There's just some random bags and, and cards, you know. I guess where I found a Ricky Ricky. This might have been stuff I already looked at. Nothing. Chromium. Yeah. I just I hate getting these out of the screw down. Bob Gibson Auto. That's kind of cool. Here's a Spencer Haywood rookie. Okay. I think I'll get them. I'll try to get these. They look cool. You're just an amazing guy. Doing amazing things. Dude, number to, that number to twenty five. That was probably hard. Well, that was hard to find. Carlos Delgado rookie. Young Carey wouldn't let me not buy that. Greg Dobbs. 
Chip or Jones rookies. Get Derek D's because that's random. Random can be good. Trent Murphy. I don't know if he's somebody. I'm just going to go better side. What's up, dude? Are you, are you filming right now? Yes, sir. Look at these. I've never seen these before. Oh, they're police uh, police cars. Like kind of cool, right? Yeah, I don't even. Never seen them. Yeah, there's too much filler in these, though. Like he'd want too much for. Oh, one you think actually... he'd want to sell the whole book? Or maybe. I mean, those white ones specifically. I think. Yeah, they're not super valuable, but they're cool. At least I don't think they're super valuable. Yeah, I hope. All... Oh, look at this. One of the most famous sets ever made, right here. 1989 Upper Deck. <laughs> I think most of us who have been into cards that are like over 35, let's say, have a 1989 Upper Deck experience. Uh, it was probably the most iconic set ever made to a lot of us. Definitely for me, I remember vividly. Here's my story about 1989 Upper Deck. Couldn't afford it. Never found a King Griffey Jr. when I was a kid. But one of my closest friends, his brother, don't know how he got it, must have saved up, had a set of 1989 upper deck cards with the King Griffey Jr. rookie. And one day, he was being super cool and super nice. He took it down from his closet and let us look at it and look through it. And it was an awesome experience. It was like the holy grail for us. It was like I was seeing pure gold in front of my face. It was so cool. Still to this day for many of us, one of the most iconic cards and sets ever made. One of the most frustrating things that can happen when you're making content is you lose footage. And I had this whole negotiation for everything that I was gonna get in the U-Haul filmed. My GoPro had died. That's what kind of threw me off. That's why it kind of cut off at that random point when I was looking through the 1989 set. And I must have filmed the rest on my camera. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I deleted that footage or something because I don't have that footage of the negotiation anymore. But let me tell you what happened. I'll give you guys a verbal synopsis of, of what the negotiation was. Um, he was high. Um, it was like 500 and I got him down to four and I overpaid. Honestly, I paid a little bit more than what I should have. And I'm going to have to hustle hard, uh, to make a profit. And it's a very good chance. I don't make a profit on it. At the time, I thought the 1977 set was maybe a little bit more than what the low end is right now. I thought maybe 250 300 um and it looks like it might be 150 to 300 and i mean to move it quickly it'll probably have to be in that 150 maybe 200 dollar range i may try to hold out for a little more money on that i mean i sold the marissa miller for 30 bucks the reggie or sorry the ricky henderson sold between like 20 and 30 and the yunt uh maybe 30 to 40 um the henderson would have sold for more and i would have sold it on ebay if it was in better condition that one went through uh whatnot and i think the yunt went through uh whatnot as well a lot of like two to ten dollar cards a lot of fun if anything from this video it, it's it, there's a couple things you can learn from it first off you can find cards everywhere even in the back of a u-haul at a yard sale like a big community a uh, city statewide yard sale like peaches to beaches that's possible second thing you can learn from this is that if you're rushing if you're really trying to get a deal done fast without going through everything you can overpay for stuff it just happens you know i i most of the time when i'm buying i'm not looking up every single card i'm just going with my gut and there's some times where it's like this is a no-brainer there's no way i can lose and there's some times where I take an educated risk. And when I got in the car after I purchased this, I was immediately kind of thinking I overpaid. And and I, I think uh, when it's all said and done, we're going to conclude that I did overpay. And maybe if I'm lucky, I'll, I'll make a little bit of a profit on it. Hopefully, fingers crossed. But um, I think the crux of the deal, and if I would have taken it out, I could have saved a lot of money, was the 1977 set. During the negotiation at one point, I, I believe I did take it out. But then we, we put it back in. We got a price that that could work and um you know i believe he thought that the 77 set was worth more than the three or four hundred and he was giving me a deal and at one time it may have been if it was a 76 set with the the peyton sweetness rookie it would have been worth well more than that i imagine but it's still a really cool cool pickup you can find cards absolutely anywhere in the back of a u-haul at a big statewide yard sale um, and I want that to be something you can learn from the American Arbitrage cards page, from Carrie's page, my page. 
um, that you can find cards anywhere, guys. Deals are everywhere. And I love cards. And as you can tell, <laughs> I'll get emotionally attached sometimes and, and pay strong, maybe even a little too strong. And it happens. That's part of it. Honestly, full disclosure, it's partially why I film stuff because you can make some money off the content. So when you when you go full circle I, in this whole deal, I, I should make a little bit of a profit because of the content angle of it as well. And I love to to kind of show everybody and you know what I'm finding when I'm out and about. I appreciate you all. I got a couple more videos that are already shot that I just need to voice over. I went back to 702, uh, did pretty good. I went uh, to a place in Utah called Overtime where I just raided their 25 cent box. So we're going to have some more videos coming out shortly, as well as more card show stuff. Front Row is here in Vegas this month in about two and a half weeks, three weeks. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, let me know down below. It's always good to know. I appreciate you guys. Take care.